Hello, welcome everyone to a new video which is about coroutine jobs and this video is part of the calling coroutines playlist. So in the previous video which is about around locking, I stopped right here in which I created this job instance that I said we can use it for cancelling a coroutine and of course for waiting for a coroutine to end to do something after that. So let's first check cancellation which is an important thing. So sometimes we don't want a coroutine to do what it's doing anymore. So if it's performing a task or something uh, then we want to cancel it because we no longer want that and how do we do that basically if we use this job instance you can say job dot cancel to cancel that job or that coroutine so let's try that out by actually uh, trying to print something so let's say for i in let's say 13 until 14 and let's just have a log here d tag coroutines and let's just print our lifecycle coroutine is uh, running like this and then we can call this can this cancel we no longer need that and by just waiting for some time so let's say delay but actually we can't have delay here so we need to use run blocking which was the topic of the previous video. So if we don't know what ROM blocking is, you can go back to that video. So we can just say delay, let's say for two seconds before uh, blocking that. And then let's have a little bit of a delay here. So every second we print something. And then let's suppose this is a heavy storage task for reading a file or a byte array or something. So let's have this inside dispatchers. I also in the IO dispatcher. So if we suppose this is uh, an IO task that will take time and then after that we want to have a log that tells us that we cancelled it so coroutine here is cancelled and let's just increase this to let's say four seconds and now let's run the app and see how that works so our coroutine is running and then after four seconds we cancel it and we no longer print the other ones because we're supposed to print 10 logs here so this is for canceling a coroutine we no longer need it but there is a thing which is now we give it time to check for cancellation because every time we try to do something here we actually check if we if our coroutine is cancelled or not that's happening behind the scenes and when a coroutine is busy doing a heavy task and it doesn't have time for to check for cancellations then it won't be cancelled because it didn't check for cancellations and to demonstrate that we'll use a function that simulates doing a heavy task which is this one uh, the recursive locus numbers function which just uh, does some calculation which actually takes time because it is a recursive function and then let's call that so don't we don't even want to delay anymore we'll just call it so let's say the result is this one and let's pass i and then let's print the result so let's say result is i result like that and now we're technically going to let's just decrease this to two seconds we're technically going to uh, cancel this after two seconds but that's not going to happen so let's run the app and see how that actually works so here we cancelled our coroutine but then we're still actually getting the results so we, it didn't cancel it's still printing things why because it didn't have time to check for cancellations it was heavy doing these uh, time consuming tasks or calculations that it didn't have time to check for calculate for cancellation so to solve that we need to check if our coroutine is still active before actually doing this so right here we can say if is active so if our coroutine is still active then we don't we, we want to do this otherwise we don't want to so now let's run the app and see how this works let's clear our logcat so it's printing things and then once it was cancelled it just stopped so there won't be 38 or 37 i mean 39 and so so it stopped right here even though this one was printed after that but it actually was cancelled so 
there isn't 38 or something otherwise if i don't have this is active that checks for cancellation and i will do the calculation for the other numbers so this is the manual cancellation which is setting up a quality properly for cancellation now the other thing we want to do here is if you want to have a timeout so if let's say we only have four seconds to do something and if we go beyond that four seconds then we want to stop it so to do that we don't actually need to cancel our coroutine anymore here so it's just not cancel it anymore here and then right here we're going to do, to surround this with i with time out function function that takes the seconds we want to wait for so let's say two seconds just like right here when we manually canceled it so two seconds and then let's have our heavy task inside that with timeout function so when we go beyond two seconds we will actually just cancel whatever we are doing inside our coroutine so we'll cancel the job the coroutine so let's check that out so it is going after two seconds it will just stop so there won't be 35 or any other thing because that's the timeout we gave it which is two seconds which is the exact same thing as canceling it like this it's just now a matter of what works best for your use case after that we want to check when our coroutine is actually joined or is ended to do something so right here we don't need anything right now so we just say job dot join and we can just say lifecycle is now not is but ends so when our coroutine ends doing whatever it is doing this is how we can check that out so we can actually we can't call this one in here so, because it's a suspend function but for the uh, job dot cancel we can actually because it's not a suspend function now when our coroutine ends or cancelled then we will be able to get that right here using the join function and let's just run the app and see so when our coroutine ends so when we go beyond the three seconds timeout we had then we just said our coroutine is finished or ends using the joint function even if we don't want to use it like this and if we just want to have it normally like this so chicken for is active if we're just doing a task and let's say just five numbers like this when we actually finish the five numbers then we want to print something or i'm sorry i actually wrote 15 here i wanted to write 35 not 15. so as you can see when i finished the five numbers i just printed that my coroutine ends and i want to show you actually uh, an example of when to cancel a coroutine of when we need to cancel it here in the movies app that i will link on the description it is on github here i have a search job so if we go up here it's just a of type job and that is a view model sculpt coroutine that just search for a query that the users enters and of course the user can answer for example four characters in one second and for each character we need to search and that's not actually good for performance that's why the first thing i do is canceling a coroutine and then launching a new one to search so if i was searching for something that i would stop that previous search and now searching for a new thing and also i don't want to search with every character the user enters when they actually type those characters very fast so i put a 500 milliseconds delay so every 500 milliseconds delay the characters that the user inputs those are the characters that i will search for and then when when they just keep entering things randomly i will actually only search every 500 milliseconds and i don't have to do all those so many searches for queries and letters that the user is entering so this is why we would need to know about cancellation a coroutine so this is it for this video we checked how we can check when our coroutine ends to then do something after that and also how we can cancel our coroutine and also how we can set up a coroutine properly to manually cancel it when it's doing a heavy task and the next video is going to be about a sync and a wait which actually is going to be the last video in this coroutines playlist so see you in that video and bye